Hello, everybody. Welcome to the virtual awards ceremony. Today, we are honoring the world's very first certified handwriting specialist teachers. And with me, I have Anthea Fenton, who is a renowned specialist. And you are going to find out all about her, more about her. It's down below. My goodness, I have been searching for what Anthea has been creating for many years. And she's going to be talking to us about the power of handwriting, what it delivers, and her own personal journey with being able to write, and how it has got her to where she is today. Because what will we be able to do if we can't write? So welcome, Anthea. Thank Tell you. us all about yourself and why you are here today honouring these specialist teachers. Thank you so much, Mel. It's great. It's absolutely great to be here because if I have to look back over my 50 odd years in this, this body, then I would, I would have said I would never, right at the beginning of my early days, I would be in this position right now, purely because when I went to school, I could actually handwrite. I would practice handwriting at home. But when I got into school, I was put into the special needs class because I wasn't performing the way that I should have been performing. And it was only until you asked me about this process, about handwriting and the importance of it, that I really understood why I had to have the journey that I had. So I broke through many glass ceilings from that primary school class of being, you know, in the, what we used to call illiterate at the time. Um, and it illiterate. wasn't illiterate, yeah, because I wasn't performing in the way that I should have been. But it wasn't my handwriting that was the issue, even though it was an English class and handwriting was really important. It was the fact that I wasn't communicating the way that I that I that I should be. Um, and so that took me on the journey, which was brilliant in a way, because by having that label, it took me on the journey of academia. So I, I was the first child. I didn't have any O levels when I left school. I just had CSEs, which didn't really, but they were like the under, like not not very clever um, barrier. And then I went on to, because people said I couldn't, I went on to do teaching because I, I went to do social work and then I wasn't happy with social work. So I went into teaching, thought, okay, if I teach, then maybe that will help people. Um, but all the time there was this, this cloud of, well, actually, you're not that clever. And handwriting for me was part of that, you know? So going to really understand, um, I guess, literature, I did my degree, I did a teaching qualification, I taught at the college, taught at university. And I feel like that, that cloud of you're not very clever from primary school was, was a massive part of it. And so I broke through many ceilings that other people thought that I couldn't break through. And then it, you knew that you could break through those ceilings. I think because nobody had any faith in me. I just thought, you know what, there's only me that can have faith in me. It's like if people saying I can't do it, then maybe I can, you know, and that's how I kind of went through. So I just want to go back. So you said that you started writing when you were, were very little, yeah. but, but school did not nurture your handwriting skills, did not nurture your abilities. They said that you were struggling. Yeah, yeah. So I wonder, I wonder, Anthea, I mean, it would be so interesting if, if you'd have had a certified handwriting specialist teacher who could have done the, the match fit assessment with you, you know, it's, I always say to these teachers, so you have the equivalent of a Ferrari. You are, you are like Umberto Giannini. You are tweaking that engine so that it is, it, it has the equivalent of a, a Lewis Hamilton driving it through the finish line. You already have the Ferrari. All you need to do is fine tune it. Absolutely. If you'd have had a handwriting specialist teacher. Oh, the difference. I know that now, just feeling it. You know, I mean, they, they would have been able to do the school-wide match fit assessment, assess you, given you your personal handwriting strategy for you and said, do you know what, Anthea, we know you can do this. Yeah. Everybody can write. I mean, yeah. I always say people get very angry when I said, you know, even a dog can write. Yeah. Anybody, you, I can teach anybody to write, <laughs> you know, and then, they, and then they all look at me and think, this lady is certifiably <laughs> absolutely yeah. off the wall, do lally. But I, I, you know, I've seen, you know, even with Denise's son, who's extremely autistic, I've seen we deliver um, Start B handwriting in schools, SEN schools here in the United Kingdom. These children are classed as disabled, mm -hmm. SEN, autistic. They are writing and they want to write. They want to express themselves. If you'd been assessed when you were little, 
I wonder what they would have discovered. They would have said to you, gosh, you know what? Maybe we need to work on spatial awareness here, or let's, let's look at confidence, maybe fine and gross motor skills. And I mean, and that was your, what did they say to you? What was the word they used? Um, what did they say? Because it was classed as being illiterate at the time, but yes, yeah, special needs, it was a special needs group. But this word illiterate would come around because I remember my mum was so like besides she was so disappointed at kind of um just make sure that that's she was so disappointed because she'd done all this work is how she felt of you know helping me to to really be you know go into class and be really proud of it but it was completely not acknowledged but but the beautiful thing though Mel is what I realized now when you asked me about this question I hadn't connected it I hadn't connected it it was about emotional intelligence there was no assessment for emotional intelligence. There was yeah. no encouragement of, well, let's let's encourage this young child to speak, to speak what it is that's going on for it. Because I was under a massive amount of trauma at that age. You know, I'd witnessed so many different things. And that was what was keeping me silent. I was just observing life. That's what I was. I was sat back observing, thinking, okay, when's the next, you know, that, that whole thing of um, fight and flight. So that's that's the mode that I was in. So it helped me, it enabled me to develop what I've developed, you know. I wanted to ask you, Ampia, now later in life, mm. you actually have developed an incredible membership, a program, a powerful membership, which involves handwriting, writing <laughs> down your story. How? How have we come full circle? It's from, from that four-year-old who was yeah. deemed illiterate mm. when really she could already write before they'd even, they didn't, they just didn't know how to, they didn't know what to do with you. And no, they didn't, still don't. <laughs> and, and now, now you have, um, write your story, empower in an hour. I mean, I've done this. I've, I've sat in one of your sessions with my mother and we're just, with the tears, just re, with, with individuals writing their own stories, yeah, their yeah. own books, their lives. <laughs> and I was thinking, wow. So how did we go from that four-year-old who was not, uh, trying to arrest her amygdala, her fight or flight response to now being, creating this powerful movement? What happened? I think what happened was that I, I'd gone, I'd gone through the ceiling. I'd gone, I'd done all the things that, that, you know, we're taught to do is get a good education, you know, so I battled through that. And I battled through it for everybody else because I battled because other people said I couldn't do it. So I did it, you know? And then when I got to working in the voluntary sector as a manager, I was already volunteering in the voluntary sector, but when I was managing and I realized, well, even at the university, I realized the goalposts would change. So I was told you have a three year degree, in social work you have a teaching qualification you have three years experience and I'd done that and I became a lecturer and I was mindful that other people hadn't got what I'd got and I was kind of like hold on a minute but I was told that you had to have all these qualifications so then that was where this this ceiling started to crumble and I realized that actually the goalpost changes depending on who you are that it really isn't based on your abilities in many ways and so I wanted to when I went to the, the charity and ended up exposing a massive fraud incident that had, had taken place, my world was crumbled. It was completely crumbled because I was thinking, here I am in the care industry or the care sector, and I'm not finding the care. So I thought when I was four and four years, 11 months, for me, it was about helping the other children to do what they were doing. And so I thought, you know what? I'm searching for something that maybe I need to create. It needs to come from me. And that needs to be where people are able to share their truth. And in doing that, by people handwriting, because I used to keep journals quite a lot when I did my counselling qualification, it was very much about journaling. And what I realised in the counselling was that here I was doing this counselling diploma. I pulled all this stuff out about my life because I knew that I'd experienced trauma. So I thought there must be trauma in there somewhere and pulled all this stuff out. And then realized at the end of the di diploma, I would placed it all back, all neatly. You know, it's kind of like, well, actually, it, it's part of who I am. So I don't want to take out and just banish. So I thought, okay, this is just about how do we organize our experiences from the environment? And so that's when I was kind of like, who else is feeling like this? Who else has gone through similar? Is this something that we can do? And what's interesting is that the images that came to me were all drawn, all the little images on the Tell Your Story book 
that it's like a child because it's reaching into that inner child that was kind of suppressed maybe because of all the layers of trauma or and what you know what other people have been saying to them and and so as part of my healing to really understand and understand all the messages that have been given externally that were just not how they were I needed to write and just release them so that then they weren't part of my internal being and so then I reached out to other people because I found that I was speaking to lots of people obviously in the in the area of care and teaching and counseling and things like that and just thought well I wonder if we can create this level playing field of everybody just sharing their story and as they write the story if anybody's had any hiccups like I had around writing then it's like we just accept people's writing however it is it doesn't matter if it's got grammar if it's spelling mistakes errors whatever it doesn't matter it's them expressing and then coming to read it it's about each of us offering that presence just holding space for that person to do with that reading experience what they want and what happens is people just start to shine they can get stuck if they keep on in the same chapter if they keep sometimes people will will kind of like try and tease a chapter out and out it's like just keep on writing just keep on writing keep on going because eventually it starts to flow and people start automatic writing. So they think that they know what they're going to be writing and then they put the pen on the paper and they start writing. And they're like, oh my gosh, I started with, I know that I was going to write this and I ended up doing this. And so the experience of the writing doesn't become, people don't become bogged down with it because there's many components to it. So there's the reading, there's the, the listening to other people and the writing becomes not insignificant, very relevant, but at the same time, they're not bogged down with all the things that, that school has said, you've got to spell, you've got to put the prop, proper punctuation and the nouns and the verbs and all that. We don't worry about all that to allow the free spirit to come through. It's so interesting. We 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 say, from our experience, from my experience with, with Start Be Handwriting and developing the assessment and the teacher training, it's about the mechanics you know, handwriting is, is a mechanical skill. And once you can write, it doesn't matter what you write, yeah. you can write as long as you have the ability to get your mark on that paper. Mm -hmm. And it's and to you that it's legible and it's fluent and that you don't, you don't get bogged down by by all the, the little things like, Oh, have I done that? Or oh, yeah. I, I can't remember this. And it's, sometimes it's really hard in that teacher training to explain that to the teacher, That's say to them, forget Forget about everything else that you just throw it all out the window. Yeah. We are going to work on the mechanics of it. Yeah. Now, if you could not write at all, if something, if something had happened, if, if you were not prepared, say you didn't have that a mum who'd put in all that effort and you you got to school and you did not were not able to write your own name and you were not taught, you were just you were just written off. How do you think that would have affected your personal development and your growth? In a way, I, f I feel that I was written off. So that's really good because I would have struggled with this, this question. <laughs> um, I feel like I was written off. I feel like I was told you're just going to care for people for the rest of your life. So, you know, as if that was a kind of like a kind of a bit of a derogatory statement, really. And that you didn't I, write yourself off. They wrote I didn't write myself. They wrote me off. Yeah, that's so, so this is where we have we see a lot of children coming into school. So, for example, like my daughter, I was told she she can't write her own name. Um, she's going to hold our pupils back. She can't come to our school. And that really incensed me because I was I was it was fear, it was fear and rage. And anybody that gets to know me, you know, I, I, I we won't get there. Um, so. <laughs> I, I got in the car and I just thought, no way, no way is my child going to be the one in three. We know that through data, hard data research, that the UK government did a, a few years back, that one in three children reach the age of 11, functionally illiterate. Now, most would never believe that. You say that to people and they go, what? Mm -hmm. That is here in the United Kingdom, in England, folks. Um, and from when we've done the match fit assessments, it's a lot worse than that. And so we can't write children off. We can't just say, well, do you know what? This child can't write. It's not, it's not. So you could write, yeah. but you were written off. Yeah. And I wonder if now, now that you've come full circle, 
you are showing yourself and those very individuals that they themselves they were written off really because they weren't trained they weren't they didn't see it they didn't see you know i look at handwriting it tells me so much about what's going on emotionally um uh, creatively energetically i look at it and i go ha huh, spatial awareness boom we've got dcd here and teachers look at me and they go how do you see it like come on it jumps it's out of it. i was once doing an assessment in an scn school and i had to go to the teachers and said there's a boy um he's get, he's going into a psychotic episode and he's not safe to himself or his peers and they said how did you see it and i said what's well, he all here on the circle <laughs> and they were like but it's the more that you do these handwriting assessments, the more children that you assess, mm -hmm. you start as you start looking. I had a head teacher phone me the other day for a good vent, and she said, "You know, we just did the handwriting match for assessment. She's got we got these new NQTs, and all the teachers in the staff room are going, oh, look at your pencil grip to the new <laughs> to the NQT.'" And I said, "Oh, that they shouldn't be doing that." She said, "I know, but we can't help ourselves now." <laughs> so. You know, we learn, we, we get to the point where we've been written off. Yeah. We reskill, we upskill, and there's no reason why we shouldn't upskill. Mm -hmm. And your training, your beautiful training, your write your own story and the board game, oh my word. Mm -hmm. when, when folks start doing this training and they start writing their own story, they'll see were they written off or did they write themselves off or did the individuals that wrote them off, they're the ones that need upskilling. They should give them a call and say, hey, I've got in power in an hour in an hour. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> it's really, it's really <laughs> as well, Mel, what you say, because in a way, what you're talking about is that those statistics and that data that's been presented now um, from the UK government, government of one in three over 40 years over 40 years in my experience has that still been the same where children are being written off so no, we've got we can't allow that whole generations of people that have been written off and i see that in the, in the storytelling it's really interesting because many people want to write a book and they always feel like they've got to do it in this structured way that they see all these books and how these books are written and one of the things that i recognized when i was younger because of this whole thing around education and and reading i wasn't a very strong reader there weren't many books in the home. The Bible was in the home, but that was about, about it. But I didn't read. Um, I couldn't engage long enough to read, which is quite interesting. So I would dip into books and still do that to, to this day, really. Um, very few books have I read from, from cover to cover. Because one of the things that I realised is the stimulation that, that reading brings about. And so I knew that when I was reading, I was kind of like, why can we not have a page where we can read a page and then make notes? Because obviously... Reading is about is some people lose themselves into the story, whereas I get get into kind of like analysing things or you know just thinking oh I wonder if that was like you know so I wanted something just to write and then I thought Anthony you can create your own book and why not have the space where you write where you read your story and then people write theirs and and to honour the process is not to read from cover to cover but is to actually expand in each chapter to read and then do your reflection so the book is a very different kind of a book than what's out there but it really does bring out some amazing conversations and experiences and the right across the world and what's interesting is that everybody we say like who taught you about money as an example and everybody's more or less got the same message that nobody really taught them or that they were taught by the parents who their parents taught them and and so just that in itself you just i'm just excited about having thousands of data of people on specific subjects that we've all got in common, like health and money and personal growth and, and who told you you were worthy, because you just see this stream of similarities whilst we see differences on the screen. And that is that for me, I'm looking forward to that, is to have lots of people writing about the same subject, because then it kind of questions our education. And, and right now, as we are in the, the space that we're in, we have to upskill differently. We have to upgrade differently. Absolutely. You no. Know? Absolutely. I think that we are we're entering into a whole new phase. I think um, where we are questioning what what is the purpose of education? Absolutely. And and how you know how do we how do we need to completely rebuild it? And do we look at those core skills? I know that it's so interesting that many, a few years ago people said to me why would you want to teach anybody to write by hand mm. <laughs> and I, I i think i've still got a video i need to add it here 
where where the it was a gentleman it was one of the presenters from sky news and he said well nobody's writing anymore and i said to him i find it really interesting you say that while holding a pen in your hand <laughs> come on we know that leaders confidence if you can write you are you are perceived to be uh, you you know that there's this hierarchy and i want us to head into an apartheid an education apartheid we can't have where those that are privately educated are the only ones that write by hand and have that skill and yeah. and then our state school children are not taught to write. we should all if we're going to have a robust um creative society uh, uh, you know all of our society should be literate and and have strong writing skills we may not all be great readers we yeah. may not be great writers but i think that just to have those as basic core skills they give us confidence and they boost our access to the curriculum whatever that curriculum may Absolutely. turn out to be who knows <laughs> and even as you're saying that it's like when you think about the you know when you think about the stimulation of of in, in education as an example it's coming external it's coming from somebody transmitting to you when you're putting the paper on the pen, that's you. That's you. Yeah. And that's and that's the power of it. Because when you produce something, I know when a young boy who had special needs was facilitating the game as an example, because you write on the card, you can draw on the card, but it's it's you it's putting your mark on that card. And the power of that doesn't matter if nobody else can understand it because you can. And that was amazing because within he played the game and then he was facilitating his his um, co-worker who was facilitating her you know just that, to helping her to get around the game and asking the questions based on the symbols and this is a young boy who had been written off you know so the power of integrating such things is so important is so so important is to not belittle anything that anybody produces it's kind of like you know what you know what that means that's fantastic and you know that's all that is anchoring that in and repeating it over and over again i can't wait i can't wait but what we'll do is we will have an in-depth after the virtual award ceremony once we've gone live with this i would love to have another chat with you all about empower in an hour and write your stories yeah. and what i want to do is i will add the links are all below this video <laughs> and we will talk more with Anthea about what she's doing and how we are going to be integrating that into other projects that we are working on globally. Because we, you know, I, literacy is the core skill, writing, literacy, carbon literacy, climate literacy, transition, we're heading into a transition, transition engineering, you know, uh, in, in, in environmental engineering, we do the lot here. So I cannot thank you enough for joining me today. And in honouring these very special, unique, certified handwriting specialist teachers, well done to all of you. You've done this training during a lockdown. You've beaten me down. I mean, you have no idea. If I tell the story about how they insisted I train them, I said, no, I can only give you one hour of deep dive. 30 hours of deep dive later. Anyway, so, and we have, we have teachers in this group. We have Sarah Cooper, who's one of the teachers. Go and look at her page, look at her story. Sarah Cooper does the assessments for um, a cluster of schools in Derbyshire and her school. She's an, an early years teacher. She's the literacy lead for Bowls Over Infants and, and Preschool. My goodness, Anthea, this teacher, she assesses all of the children in the school. She oversees the assessment every year. And I'm watching the data year on year. And I've just said to her, do you know that you've got enough there for like a hundred PhDs? You could be sharing this with teachers in other. So there is so much information. And instead of us holding on to our knowledge, what we're doing now is we are sharing our knowledge. I want to ensure that there are hundreds and thousands, millions of specialist certified handwriting specialist teachers and I would love for them, some of them will decide to go up and do the master's degree in the um, history, science, and psychology of handwriting. And I would love nothing more than to see hundreds of doctors of handwriting Absolutely. working in schools and countries so that we can develop this as a skill 
let's see where we go with this because once you have this knowledge there shouldn't only be two or three of us in the world mm -hmm. there need to be thousands of us i'm taking a cue from an amazing lady called professor paula garb she launched the um center for peace and citizenship in at uci in america and that was about 20 30 years ago and i was doing a talk with her from the recovery curriculum and she spoke about how the whole thing was developing, taking these, these teachers, these, these students, and turning them into professors, that they would then go run these, these units of peace and citizenship around the world. And I thought, you know, Paul, I think you're onto something here. So it's not just hanging on to it for ourselves, mm. it's like you with an empower and an hour mm. and a book and writing your story. It's about empowering each other, ourselves, and sharing our knowledge globally. Absolutely. We are moving into a completely different era in education yeah. and being able to write and being able to assess those potential barriers to writing. Mm. No child should be written off. Mm. Every teacher should be upskilled. Yeah. Uh, we, we are going to be developing these fine tuned, fine tuned specialist teachers. And mm. that is what is so exciting. Absolutely. And the feedback. We're going to watch some of their talks. Mm -hmm. Some of them, what they say to me in the deep dives. Wow. They say, why don't we know this 30 years ago? Yeah. So let's have a look. Let's see. And we're going to be doing this virtual awards ceremony. And we will come back at a year's time yeah. to the group that join us for 2022, our cohort for 2022. And then we'll be seeing these masters developing and these doctors coming through. So we're gonna be watching their process. We're gonna watch them developing and growing and flourishing and sharing this and spreading this knowledge globally so that we have at least certified handwriting specialist teachers in every age group, in every school, throughout the world that's where we're going folks so and you heard it here during yeah. <laughs> Anthea I cannot thank you enough for joining me and from us from this virtual awards ceremony here today we salute all of you and to those of you that are interested in learning more about what Anthea does and about the handwriting training it's all down below and we'll thank see you, so you all on the other side bye bye bye-bye. Bye. Bye.